Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton, your host. Uh, welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am so excited to have my guest on today. I know I say that all the time, but that's because I bring exciting people onto the podcast and <laughs> people who are so much fun for me to talk to and that um, who I know are going to be a great encouragement to you. So my guest today is um, one who I know is going to be an encouragement to you, especially those of you who maybe have older children. It's not just for those with older children, but I know if you've got middle schoolers or high schoolers, this one's going to be especially encouraging for you. Her name is Ray Perry. Uh, Ray Perry, she educated her seven children at home since 1987. When her oldest son was 18, he replaced his dad's income in just three years. I can't wait for you guys to hear that story because that's a great one. Her second son owns and operates a successful commercial and industrial roofing company. Now a widow and award-winning home business owner, Ray helps families learn how to educate their kids to be leaders and to build home businesses. She hosts two annual live conferences and mentors families through her home business coaching program. So Ray, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Yvette. I love what you guys do and I'm so excited to be here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We got to meet you a couple of years ago um, at a conference and we, we met you at the life schooling conference in Charlotte, North Carolina, and you were one of the speakers there and you were just so encouraging. You talked a lot about home business and about, uh, just training children to be entre entrepreneurs. And then we went to your home business conference several months later. And again, we were just so overwhelmed and blown away in a good way, um, by the message that you're getting across. And so you were a homeschool mom who has been really successful in teaching your kids how to become entrepreneurs and not just your own kids, but families all across the globe, really, literally across the globe, not just families who are in, in the state. Um, so tell us your story. Well, I would love to because basically it's what God has done in our life. Um, I never intended to homeschool our children. I have a degree in education from a major university, and I just thought that we would live the normal life like everybody else lives, and we would have our, our two children, and we would, you know, everything would be fine. And right after we got married, my husband, who had almost two master's degrees in education, said, I would like for us to homeschool the children. And I said, forget that. I am not doing that. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so after 10 years of trying public school, Christian school, private school with our oldest two children, nothing was working the way that we wanted it to. And so we just decided to give it a shot for one year. I said, okay, I'll try it. You've been there, you know, one year. Yep. Yep. And uh, so we bought some expensive curriculum that was secular, used it for two weeks, um, threw it out, and then just kind of went to the library. And uh, along the way, we met Bob and Tina Farewell and worked for them. Uh, they had a company called Lifetime Books and Gifts years ago. Uh, they carried five children across the country in a in a, a bus six months out of the year to take the most wonderful living books resources to homeschoolers all over the country. And so we went to work for them, and they taught me how to homeschool our children in the second year. Then we started homeschooling. So people would come to us all the time and they would say, uh, sure, Charlotte Mason's wonderful and this lifestyle of learning concept is really good, but what about high school? And so we were constantly trying to figure out what to do about high school. And about that time, <clears throat> my son, and my oldest son had to take a standardized test, and I could tell by the way he took the test, this was not going to go well, and he was <laughs> not going to be able to play the game you have to play to go to college. So I told my husband we needed to start looking at something else, and so um, about that time, we started uh, selling with Lifetime Books and Gifts, Robert Kiyosaki's books, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Mm -hmm. Sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. And... <clears throat> So I read those books, and I believe what he said, and we started studying real estate and doing different things um, that he mentioned in his books because he was um, from an educator's family, which I was too. So <clears throat> we started studying with real estate. We moved to the country when, when Drew was 14. My oldest son was 14. And I just gave him the outside, and I said, okay, figure out how to monetize this, and I'll keep all the children on the inside um, educated and, and contained and happy. And I was pregnant all the time, so I was always sick and <laughs> not doing very well. And um, so he started studying different ways to bring his dad home. And that's what he did for his high school years when he was starting on when he was 14. So he started off with farming. Then he studied the stock market, studied eBay, sold all, everything in my basement, um, got, studied <laughs> internet marketing, um, studied lots of different topics. And then he came to, <clears throat> he bought a house. 
he bought and sold 70 houses during that time. Wow. But he bought, bought a house he couldn't get rid of. And uh, so we tried to sell it on eBay and created a system for selling houses on eBay, using eBay as the, the vehicle to sell the houses. But then we offered owner financing and it worked out really well. He created a course. Uh, he, he would speak at the real estate investment club meetings when he was about, I don't know, 17, 18 wow. uh, in Nashville, Atlanta, uh, Birmingham. And he would make $30,000 in a night selling his course wow. to these old guys who didn't know how to use the internet. So I looked at that and I said, okay, my son who is not super educated is making $30,000 in an hour. Like I had seen my internet marketing friends do my super educated husband was making $35,000 in a year. Wow. And I said, okay, I am seeing and I am living exactly what I have been told about the American dream. And so we started looking at things differently. And uh, long story short, it took about three years for us to go through all that process. And we brought my husband home from his job in corporate America. And he was able to stay home with his dad who lived in our guest house next door for about three years. The, uh, his dad died, but he was here with us for that time. So that was really wonderful. Um, and my husband also got sick. And so right after that, he died. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was left with four of our uh, seven children still at home. When I was 55 years old, I, I didn't want to have to go get a job and leave the home. Uh, I wanted to be able to stay home with my kids and continue homeschooling. So I had started a little internet business. I had a, a, a little membership site called Education for success where we just talked about how to homeschool your children for home business and specific home businesses and uh, so we started that ramped it up a little bit started a, a coaching program with it which is still going after all these years started that in 2005 and um, it took off and ran, went and then we started hosting conferences the first one was in my house the second one was in my house uh, the third one we had our, we rented a university down the road and then we started having them in hotels and now we're in state parks because state parks are more family friendly and uh, so we just we just kind of stumbled into something so I brought those internet marketers that, that I saw making millions of dollars in, in short periods of times I brought those guys to the homeschool families who were trying to figure out how to make money from home put those two groups together and they've they've ministered very well to each other and uh, so we host the conference uh, once a year when we when we bring them in then I got invited to go overseas so I, I travel internationally now and uh, talk to people wherever I'm invited to go and talk to them about how they can teach their children to have home businesses so that's pretty much what I do in a nutshell you know just your <laughs> regular average Joe <laughs> that was a really quick nutshell <laughs> yes um, one of the things I love about your conference is that it's it's for families because I know a lot of business conferences obviously are for <clears throat> adults because they're business conferences and so you take an adult you know typically I would say in their 20s or 30s bring them into this business conference teach them how to be business owners on, entrepreneurs and, and such um, and oftentimes those people are they're in a situation where you know they might have a family that they're supporting or they might have um, a job already and they're trying to figure out how to get out of that job and how to get into this lifestyle of owning their own business but it's hard to break out of that once you're in that adult life and so and and many people will just take that leap of faith but when you have a family that's that can be a little bit um, intimidating to do but your conference I one of the things that was so impressive to me is that there were children, I mean, young children, like I would say all the way down to, you know, four or five years old who were in the conference participating in it and being able to hear the stories of all of these people and, and these leaders who you bring in and how they have been successful in owning businesses. And, and I want to say it wasn't just, you know, it, it's not like you brought in people who sell Pampered Chef and Plexus and all those. Now there's that <laughs> aspect of home business as well. And I know a lot of people are very successful in doing that, but you had authors um, who would come in and talk about writing books and how they have been able to monetize that and, and a podcaster who was able to monetize this podcast. And so there are so many different ways you talked about selling on eBay and I know a lot of people sell on eBay and Amazon and things like that. And so there are so many different ways. And so, so where do you, where do you find these people <laughs> to come in and be able to educate and pass on their knowledge to the people who are at your conference? Well, Yvette, that's a great question. And I just feel so blessed that the Lord has put me in the middle of the internet millionaires, uh, guys who create things like, um, uh, home businesses that that serve people online like pop-ups I know nobody likes uh, pops up pop-ups but somebody had to create that kind of thing and, sure. and monetized it and the, the guy that created pop-ups and the the entire concept of that was my mentor and uh, I just 
have been blessed. Like in 2003, it was just a magic year for me. The Lord put me in a bunch of different conferences during that time where I met a lot of different people. And then I maintain those relationships through the years. And when I find out that some, but somebody's doing something that works really well, mm-hmm. like Amazon, like the, the peer leader of Amazon is one of my dear friends. And when it took off and, and just went crazy, I just contacted him and said, hey, uh, you know, first of all, you need to have an event. So I hosted his event for him for six years. And then I said, um, why don't you come speak to our people about selling on Amazon? And so we also kind of keep our eye on what's happening because th- sometimes doors shut, you know, different yeah. things that, that were working don't work anymore. And so what happens is a window opens somewhere. So I'm, I always tell people you have to have multiple streams of income and you need to keep your eyes open because those, those streams can change streams in the, in, in a, like there are real rivers that are, you know, in the ground actually do change. They move. And so you have to, you have to pay attention to when things move. Um, in Ecclesiastes 11 two, it says divide your portion to seven or even to eight, because you do not know what misfortune may occur on the earth. And yet our government education system says, just go have one job. Well, mm-hmm. if you have one job, and your the mom in the household stops her job, quits or doesn't go to work or whatever so that she can stay home and homeschool the children. And you have one job in your house and something happens to that one job or to the person who has that one job, you have no income. Right. Well, I think that Solomon in all his wisdom is saying, look, if you have multiple streams of income, if you have seven different projects, like say five different rental houses, uh, a, a job and a network marketing company, that's seven different uh, streams of income. And something happens to one of those, you still have six more. Right. And so I think that we should look at the Bible and follow the wisdom of Solomon rather than the, what we've been taught in our government education system. The other thing I don't really like is the median income in our country, and we're talking about America here, is is fifty two thousand dollars a year. But yet uh, it takes seventy thousand dollars a year to be poor. There's a book by uh, Josh. Um, oh, I forgot his name. Oh my goodness, forgive me. Uh, Evangelpreneur. Josh Tolley, you know, he was one of my speakers one time and he did a study and he said, how much does it cost to live? Cause he was about to get married. Uh, He was a single, single young man. And he said, um, I want to know how much it costs to get married. So he did a study. Turns out to be poor, you have to have $70,000 yet. Everybody's proud and aiming at 52,000 for a family of four. uh, four. And then you have seven children or 10 children or 15 children, like some of my friends do. And you're going to live on $52,000 a year. Well, no, I don't think that's going to work very well. And so you've got to do something different. So one of the things that we encourage our, our families to do, and this is why I love having children at the events, is if you're stuck in that standard family model that the government education system has taught us, mm-hmm. A man can't get out of it by himself because he's usually working too many hours and he comes home and he's just exhausted and he can't go, he can't do anything else or he might even be working two jobs already. Mm -hmm. So if mom and the children can step in and say, look, let's do a project. Let's get all of our schoolwork done by 12 o'clock, one o'clock. Let's work on projects in the afternoon and see if we can create some income so that we can encourage dad and also replace his income. If you've got a couple older children in the house, and I'm talking 10, 12 years old, Mm -hmm. they are very capable. And a lot of our, the people that we hire are, are that age. They they own their own businesses. They're not employees. They, we, we hire them as contractors and uh, they advise us and they do technical work for us because young people these days are very smart. Yes. So I just encourage these families to work together on bringing their dad home. And once the, the project money that they're creating in the afternoons uh, exceeds the money that dad is making, then he can quit his job and come home if he wants to. Sometimes they don't want to. Sometimes they like what they're doing, but at least now they have more money coming into the household. And it's, it's not about being rich and, and, and having a lot of stuff, but, but another concept that I really believe in is we are here on this earth to help others. We're here to serve. That's what we're here for. We have Mm -hmm. products, we have services, we have skills, abilities, talents. We're here to help other people. If all I do is make enough money for me to just barely get by, which is what I hear people say all the time. Oh, I just want to barely get by. I don't want to be, I don't want to be selfish. Then if you have a need and you call me and say, Hey, I need $10. And I say, well, I'm sorry that, but I can't help you because I I don't have any money because I just barely get by. I'm not able to help you. But what happens Mm -hmm. if you need a thousand dollars? You know, I'm not able to help you. And so when we have, when we are living with an abundance mindset rather than a poverty mindset, we're able to do what I think that the Lord has us to do. And that is to serve others. Yep. Yep. I agree completely. Um, let's take a quick break and then we're going to come back and I want to talk about some of the success stories um, of people who have, who you've worked with before. So we'll be right back. Okay. 
So I want to talk about some of the success stories. And, and you know, you talk about how hard it is to just quit your job and, and jump into this whole life of being a, a business owner, an entrepreneur. Um, and we, we actually have a, a, a neat story um, of our family. And I think I've told this before on the podcast, but I don't know how detailed I've gotten about it, but about four years ago, I guess it was, um, my husband had been working in the Hollywood film industry and he had been in that industry for many years and he loved what he did, but he didn't really believe in the, the product that he was producing. We were not big TV watchers. We're not big movie watchers. I mean, we enjoy him every now and then, but, but that's just not us, but he was designed for filmmaking I mean, he's very good at it. He, he loved what he did, but he really wanted to do something that was going to really impact God's kingdom. And so he, he just, for years and years and years, he felt like he needed to get out of that industry. Um, but he felt stuck because he thought, well, I don't have another job. And he worked so much that he didn't have time to look for another job. And it was just this crazy, vicious cycle that he was on for many years until one day he literally just said, I'm done. He, and, and without having another job, um, in the background, he just quit. He called me up one day and it, the girls and I still, you know, talk about how we rejoiced. Um, he said, I just, I just quit. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm coming home. And we literally jumped up and down and rejoiced. And then we got on our knees and we prayed and we were like, okay, Lord, you've got this. Mm -hmm. And um, so he, he quit cold turkey and we, he went several months without having a, a job. Um, but then he, um, went to work for our church and he went to teach film production at a Christian school for a year. And he really loved doing that, but really felt like the Lord had put it on his heart for us to go out and make this documentary schoolhouse rocked. And so we took a huge leap of faith and it was, we, we just said, Lord, we're going to lay this fleece before you. We're going to trust you. If this is really what you want us to do, we're going to trust you to provide. And so we sold our house. We sold all of our stuff. We loaded up into an RV and for the past two and a half years, we've been traveling and filming this documentary, and it has been an incredible journey for us. And what's been incredible about it is not, not our faith in taking um, that step, but being able to watch the hand of God provide for our family, because right. we serve an incredibly big God. For those of you who are listening and you don't know that, let me just tell you, we serve a very, very big and very faithful God. And what many people see as maybe foolish for him to, to leave a job where we had security and he had a you know pretty healthy paycheck coming in and we had a nice house. To give all of that up to follow what God was calling our family to do seems foolish, but we didn't do it carelessly and we still don't do it carelessly. We are very intentional about everything that we do, but we also we trust that the Lord is going to provide for us and he has provided for us miraculously over the last couple of years. Um, and so that's our story. We're still in the midst of our story. God is still writing this story for us you know, as I speak. And it's so neat to be part of what God has called us to do because we, we get to do something that is impacting culture and impacting God's kingdom and, and people and, and drawing people's hearts towards homeschooling because we strongly believe in homeschooling. We believe it's the best way to disciple your children's hearts. And so anyway, that's our story, but I would love for you to share some of the other success stories um, of people who you've worked with before. Sure. We have many, many success stories, but I don't have permission to tell them because <laughs> these people are very humble. So I'll tell you a few, but um, I just would, change the names and they'll never know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, would I would love to change the names, but they would know who I was talking about. So um, about um, three or four years ago, a lady came to me at one of the homeschool conventions. I speak at 10 homeschool conventions in the summer on home business. I'm the only person that talks about the things that I talk about, mm -hmm. like um, creating passive income and things like that. Mm -hmm. at homeschool conventions and um <clears throat> so a lady came to me and um she had this face oh my goodness she was in such despair mm -hmm. she had two older boys and i think she had uh two or three little kids at that time and she said we're sinking we're not making it i i don't know what to do and so i sat down and i talked with her in my booth because I, I set my booth up not like you do at a typical trade show where where there's a table between you and the people i'd turn it sideways and, and put chairs in a circle and make, make it like a living room and say come into my space let's sit down and talk for three hours and we do so I just asked her some questions about who she was and what she liked to do and what were her goals in life and, you know, her values and things like that. And I just asked her a couple of questions about Amazon and shopping and selling and things. And so I helped her create a, a business 
uh, selling stuff on Amazon. And I put her in touch with the person that I thought was the best person to teach her how to do that, you know, buy a little course to do that. And, uh, and then these two boys walked up, these two teenage boys, and they said, hey, mom, can we, you know, have the car keys or something? And I looked at them and I was like, are these your guys? And she said, yes. And I said, can they drive? And she goes, yes. I said, cha-ching, Peter, this is awesome. Teach these guys how to do work with you and send them out to go do some shopping for you. And you can stay home with the little kids and if this is going to work. Well, every time I saw her for the next two or three years, she got more and more excited. And we actually had her speak at our conference this past February. At our, at our home education for home business conference in two years she had replaced her husband's income mm -hmm. he was a public school teacher mm -hmm. she tripled her his income in two years and had a baby and got sick from the baby being from when she was pregnant she had a bad pregnancy had the baby recovered from that and, and was still sick and um and and brought her husband home and the, and one of the boys i think graduated from school or something and and they were helping her but i think they're actually both gone now and so that was two years they beat us um and she actually says now that she she made last year made one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. Wow. homeschool mom and she has given us permission to share that she shared that at our last conference i was super proud of her okay so another lady that was a vendor um, at the homeschool conventions years ago um, was working with her husband and her husband was the one that was providing the service. It was technical IT stuff. And I looked at him one day and I thought, okay, this man looks very sick to me. And I went up to her and talked to her at one of the shows. And I said, is he okay? And she said, no, he's not okay. I said, well, if anything happens, call me. Well, she called me a year or two later and she said he died. Hmm. And I said, I'm so sorry. I totally know your pain. I know how this is, how this is. And she goes, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I taught her how to do a project. And she had a six-year-old daughter still at home. Her children had all left home, but she had this one, one daughter left at home. So she works with that daughter and um, they sell things online too. And so now the daughter has taken over. She, she loves it. She plays with the phone and she does videos of herself when they go out and buy things and put, to put up online. And so they are, um, uh, making money and doing very well. And we host a, a summer home business conference contest every year uh, where the winner wins a thousand dollars. And that year they won it. Now, Joy was six years old when she did. And you're going to say, well, a six year old's not old enough to win a contest. Well, what I teach these young people is, uh, when you don't have what you need, you partner with somebody who has what you do need, which is old age. So the mom entered the contest, even though Joy did a lot of the work and they won. Uh, this last year, we had a, a girl in South Carolina who had actually had an, ac an automobile accident and was uh, uh, severely brain damaged. Mm -hmm. And she's a horse whisperer and um, she's going through some, you know, some uh, uh, recovery, you know, therapy and all. Uh, but, sh but during that time she kept on training horses and she became uh, very concerned that people who are going through uh, trauma uh, recovery phases uh, bond really well with animals. And so she started training miniature horses to go serve um, people who have special needs of all kinds. And so she entered the contest this last year and she won. So, and wow. she was 14. So she entered with her mom because she was only 14. Her mom had to enter. Her mom is a veterinarian who uses um, homeopathic um, um, oils to cure, uh, well, not to cure, but to help animals. Um, and she um, uh, is a young living distributor too. And so uh, they are, are just doing very, very well in spite of having a very hard year because all th three, the mom and the two children were both, uh, were all three in the, in the car accident and it was oh, just wow. devastating to them. Um, we have a young man uh, who is, um, who was 11 when I hired him to uh, be a teacher of uh, with to a, a lady who had two children older than him that were in high school, public high school, uh, to teach the, to teach her how to sell things on Amazon, and um, she he did that he he was he did ten sessions with her and got paid. And then uh -huh. we sent him to China, sent him to China with his dad to go learn um, how to uh, buy and sell directly from the, the manufacturers in China. And while he was there, he was actually at a training session, and uh, he made a little. Um, promo video on his iPad while, while this training session was going on. He was 12 years old and um, he showed it to the host of the conference and the, and the guy played it on the next uh, 
uh, session and it, on a gigantic screen. And he told all the people that were there, he said, this is what you guys need to do if you're going to be selling online. You have to have little videos and know how to put them out there online. And then he, he had the guy come up on the stage and he goes, he goes, now, can, can they hire you to put their videos together for like 30 second videos? And he goes, yeah, sure. So in two minutes, this young 12 year old man made $1,200. Wow. So, and he's now helping his family uh, sell online and, uh, and they all work together and they're, they're working on bringing their mother home from her, do her job as a doctor. So we have lots of people all across the country. These are in South Carolina, uh, Michigan. Um, we have one in, in Georgia. Uh, a man went with me on a cruise and talked to one person at breakfast, came home and changed one digit on his website and double his income. Uh, and then this year, I believe he's about to triple it and he sells cats online. That's all he does. So wow. that's a crazy story. <laughs> I mean, there's all kinds of ways of making money out there. You just have yes. to, um, you know, find what works for you. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, we, we talk a lot about this on the podcast. God has given every single one of us a gift and a talent and an ability to do something. Um, and so I know sometimes it's, it's hard to figure out exactly what that is and what your passion is and, and how God will use you to be able to do those things. But he will, if you just lay that at his feet and, and surrender to him, he will, he will help you through it. And so um, it's, it's very exciting. I was talking to a friend um, yesterday, Teresa Bowen, um, and she said something to me that was I, like, it was one of those things I said, I've, I've got to just remember this. And she said, walk with the wise and be wise. And it's such a true statement. If we walk with people who are wise, we're going to be wise. If we walk with fools, we're going to be foolish. And, and becoming an entrepreneur and becoming, um, you know, even with our kids, someone who is going to be successful at doing business, if we walk with people who have done it well before us, it doesn't always mean we have to do it exactly the way that they've done it, but learn from them, walk beside those people and, and just glean wisdom from them. Um, and I know right. you talk a lot about mentorship um, at, at your conference and, and through um, just your different platforms that you have. Um, what have you seen? What have you seen mentorship be able to do for people who are trying to bring, earn, earn a, a living and earn an income from home? So oh, mentorship is key because we are not taught to think like entrepreneurs. Uh, we talk about America being an entrepreneurial country, mm -hmm. uh, but yet our government education system teaches us all to be employees. That's right. all it does. There is no place in education, including the MBA, where you are ever taught to have a home business or think for yourself. So if you're going to do that, you're going to have to learn it from somebody else. In fact, nowadays, our government education is teaching us to have a government job, not just a job, but a government job. So if you're trained in that mindset for 12 or 14 or 16 or 18 or 20 years, mm -hmm. it's hard to break out of that. And so you have to have somebody that comes alongside of you and talks to you and teaches you how to think that is different. Um, and so what I do by bringing these, um, these, um, a lot of them are millionaires. I like to have millionaires because they are qualified. You know, you don't want to learn from uh, how to make money from somebody who understands the, the scriptural principles or has some great ideas or philosophy or theory. You want to see that they know what they're doing. Right. So I bring, in people who are proven experts to talk to people. Mm -hmm. So, um, so they come in and they, and they teach just by the sessions that they do, they teach people, they challenge the way that they think. Um, and they, they help them to try to get over that, that mindset that we've taught. And what I realized from going to conferences with my children for years is that being indoctrinated in that mindset for so long is, is hard to overcome. Sure. And so when you take your young people who are trusting and believing and who have not been exposed to that to a conference and somebody stands up and says, you can, if you think you can, and if you put your mind to it and learn how to turn that, that uh, computer on, it's actually an ATM. It, it'll crank out money if you know how to use it. Mm -hmm. They believe that. Now, those of us who are, are skeptical and older, we go, oh, <laughs> no, my brother's sister's friend's barber's cousin told me that that wouldn't work. Right. And so, you know, we're very skeptical and we don't, we don't trust new things sometimes and we don't trust the internet and, you know, we, we just don't understand uh, the whole concept at all, but these young people get it. And so what I love is when a family comes together uh, to our conference and they sit and they listen together, I don't, I don't have childcare or another room for the kids to go off and play someplace else. I want those kids sitting right there in that room yeah. in that big ballroom with their parents so that when they go home when they now they go, they'll do a bunch of cool fun stuff while they're there because we have lots of things going on at night. We have uh, English country dancing and cryptocurrency uh, talks and lots of other things. But um, when they go home, Home, when they're writing home, they're going to talk about what they heard. Mm -hmm. And the parents are going to have one perspective.
perspective of it and the young people are going to have another perspective. Um, and sometimes the, the older people don't get it. But if there are se- seeds planted in those young people's minds that they think that they can do something different, then they will step out and do something and try things that are new that the parents never would. An example of that is Drew had a course on how to sell houses on eBay years ago. He turned it off, unfortunately, but, and somebody else bought it. So it is out there still for sale. But, but um, he, he taught, he taught this course and um, there was a family in Texas that bought the course from him and they went home and the young man sent him a, a video about a month later, and it's and the boy was 14 years old. And he said, hey, Drew, just want to let you know, mom bought your course and gave it to me because we wanted to sell our house. We didn't know if it would work or not, but I sold the house. Here's a check. I just want to show you it works. Thanks. Wow. Appreciate it. <laughs> so, you know, the mom might have been a little apprehensive about trying to do something that was different because yeah. back then nobody sold houses on eBay like we did. Right. And um and this young person said, hey, well, if Drew can do it, I can do it, you know. Yeah. And so that's what ha- what they need to see. And so mentors come in all shapes and sizes. They come in. Um, I mean, you just never know who is going to end up mentoring you. And some of the best ones uh, are come along in an informal situation. My uh, oldest son went to a, um auto mechanic two days a week when he was 12. My husband would just drop him off at work. Uh, and then pick him up on the way back. And all he did was just work at the auto mechanics shop all day long. And um, he learned a tremendous amount of things about machines. Well, now he owns three dirt companies and he has a lot of tractors. He also flips tractors on online, uh, all kinds of uh, machinery. He'll bring a, a piece of machinery home, buy it somewhere, fix it up, spray paint it yellow, you know, Rust-Oleum yellow, pressure wash it and then flip it the next day or two and make some money on it. And so he learned how to do, you know, he loves it. He's a, he's a guy. They love tinkering with things like that. Sure. He learned that how to do that, the mechanic work from a, a man who he just spent some time with. And then that man, the man actually ended up homeschooling his youngest child. Mm. So, you know, it works out for, so that it's win-win for everybody. Yes. Oh, that's so awesome. Um, We are out of time for the podcast, but I want to continue this conversation because I have a few more questions I want to ask you. And I would love for you to tell um, homeschool moms, give some very specific things. And I should say dads. I I always say homeschool moms, I think, because I'm a mom. And so naturally I say homeschool moms, but we have several dads who listen to the podcast as well. So dads, I'm sorry. I don't ever mean to offend you by saying moms. Um, But for homeschool parents listening, um, let's continue the conversation. And can you maybe give some very specific steps that they can take to helping their children to become entrepreneurs? Well, first of all, I think that that entrepreneurial spirit is already inside of everybody because God is an entrepreneur. We were made in the image of God. Hey, this whole earth is a big project and God took a huge risk putting this thing together, putting two people in charge, putting them in a garden and giving them one rule. Don't eat that. And what did they do? They ate that. Was that a risk or not? I mean, let's talk about real risk here. It affected the entire world. So I think that everybody has an entrepreneurial spirit. And I think what happens is, is our educational system crushes that. Mm-hmm. And, and, and people tell you all through your early, early life, that won't work. And so you, you crush those dreams down inside of you. And so all we do is we just speak life to them and say, hey, what's inside of you that you've always wanted to do? Mm-hmm. But um, don't be afraid to trust God. Don't tell your children no all the time. Don't try to control yeah. everything that they do. Let them go. Because so many times you'll, they'll come to you with a crazy idea like my boys did. Hey, let's sell this house for a penny on eBay. And one of them said a penny, one of them said a dollar. I'm like, what? we don't mock our children at this house. Mm-hmm. But I was thinking to myself, you can't do that on eBay. Mm-hmm. If you don't say, don't say we can't afford that. Say, how can we afford that? And if they mm-hmm. come to you with a project, just say, I don't see it. How are you going to make that happen? Including how are you going to finance it? How are you going to pay for this thing? And just give them the, the responsibility. Don't think that you have to follow um, what the state says that we have to do to the letter of the law, because there's a lot of leeway inside of our state regulations. A lot of times they say you, they want you to have four years of math. Well, then study bookkeeping and accounting and statistics and, and marketing and things like that uh, if you, for, to get credit for your maths. And make sure that you're including real things, but use real books, real projects, and real people. Keep your academics to, to the morning and do cool, fun stuff in the afternoons. Yeah, I oh, love it so much. Let's continue this conversation for Backstage Pass members. Um, really quickly, for those listening to the podcast, where can they find out more about you and your conference that you have coming up in August? 
Awesome. I'm on Facebook. Ray dot Perry, R H E A dot P E R R Y. Ray dot Perry is on, on Facebook. Uh, you're welcome to follow me. And um, our conference coming up is at educating. That's E D U C A T I N G for F O R success uh, dot com forward slash 2019 H B C, which stands for Home Business Con- Conference. So that's educating for success dot com forward slash 2019 H B C. Okay, awesome. And as always, we will have the links to that in the podcast. So thank you guys so much for listening um, to the podcast. For Backstage Pass members, we're going to keep going with this conversation for a few more minutes. Um, so stick around. Okay, have, you, have a great day, guys. Bye. Okay. Um, so I, let's, uh, you said something a few minutes ago, and I've heard you say this before. You say, don't mock our kids when they have ideas about things. and I love that so much because oftentimes, you know, our kids will say, you know, oh, mom, can I go build a lemonade stand? And you're thinking, it's going to be so much work and it's hot outside and, you know, you have to get the plastic cups and get the lemonade and it's just going to be a big hassle and they just want to go outside and have some fun and um, maybe make a little bit of money doing it. And so several months ago, this was maybe even a year ago or so, um, my girls wanted to they wanted to sell stuff. <laughs> and so one of the little neighbor girls who, who lives a couple houses down, she makes slime and Brooklyn had made a couple of homeschool or no, a couple of homemade things, uh, some bookmarks. And I can't even remember what else it was. I should know this, but anyway, it was just a few little things. And so they went out to the front of the neighborhood and, and they made some big signs and they sold, I mean, it was like, just stuff. It, it wasn't anything spectacular. Literally, they sold slime and something else. And they made like $40 in one hour. <laughs> I was like, how in the world did you guys make $40? But part of it was because they're just darn cute. And so, you know, people thought, well, we can certainly spend a couple bucks to, to buy slime and, and bookmarks from these kids. Um, but it was, I was so glad after that, that I hadn't said no to them because life is busy and it's kind of a hassle to take the table and do all that stuff and set it up. And so I love that you talk about not mocking their ideas, but really encouraging them and in, in doing those things. Cause that's how our kids learn oftentimes. Right. I've heard so many people say ugly things to their children. And if they could only listen to the recording back, I think that they would probably change their conversation because children come up with crazy ideas. I mean, yeah. like, they, 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 but they're creative and they think differently. And that's what I think that God wants us to do because it says in the Bible, become like children. You know, it's that, it's that childlike faith where you easily believe and you easily follow and you, you come jump up on the lap, lap of Jesus and sit in his lap. Um, and you're not afraid and you're not intimidated. Uh, whereas, um, older people are like, Oh no, that won't work. And you know, they've, they've, they've experienced the hardness of life. And so they've yes. been beat down. So when a child comes to you with an idea, if you say, well, now that's interesting. I don't see what you see, but, um, I'm, I'm, I can't wait to see what you do with it. That's that gives them permission to take off and go. And one of my girls said one time, "Why do you think that the boys have never they they just are so successful with everything that they do?" And one of them said, "I think it's because they don't think they can fail. Because whenever they do something that looks to us like a failure, they don't think of it as a failure. Even if they've right. lost ten thousand dollars, they're like, oh, well, we shouldn't have done that. What's the yeah. lesson that we can learn so that we don't do yes. that again?' You know, they don't sit there and bang uh, bang their head against the wall and and worry and um, you know, accuse themselves and accuse everybody else. They just keep going. Right. And, and I don't understand how they got that way. Um, but they just don't see things as a failure. It's, yeah. it's an amazing thing. But um, I see so many older people in the way that they speak to younger people, basically outright mocking them. Like when they come up with an idea, they'll go, Oh, that won't work. Or what do you think? What do you think makes you, what do you think is going to make you make that happen? I mean, how do you think that's going to happen? I mean, they just have a real ugly face and they say ugly words and it's like stabbing a kid with a knife and in their heart and they're, and they're like, forgive me for even talking or forgive me for even existing. Why, you know, why am I even trying to share with you my, my valuable 
ideas. Right. And really they are because sometimes these kids come up with some really crazy cool ideas that if you know somebody would have a little bit of money and put them into to, to place, they might change the world. Yeah. So that is, it's in our, our idea of, ch- of, uh, of how children are and, and how we are supposed to raise them. Another thing is this control thing. Homeschool moms are operating in fear rather than faith most of the time. They are afraid that they're going to leave something out. There's going to be some kind of gap. Uh, there's going to be something that they are not thinking about that they are, that, that when they get down to the end and their, their child is ready to graduate, that, that there's going to be some class or some test they take or whatever that, that they're going to fail or have omitted and therefore not going to succeed. Well, guess what? The test, the, the, the diploma, the degrees, all those things, they are artificial um, uh, road marks, basically landmarks, put in the journey so that the the artificial government education system can measure what's happening with all these kids in mass. We are not doing that. We're not taking a gigantic amount of children through a certain amount of stuff in a certain amount of time. We are tutoring two or three kids. We can do it on a linear path, and we know what they know. <clears throat> and so, moms should be able to just trust God and say, "Okay, look, God gave you these kids." He knows them. He knows you. You know them. And he'll put things in your heart to do. But what happens is moms harden their hearts and they say, oh, no, no, I can't stop and bake a cake today to take it to the neighbor because we've got to do our Saxon math today. Or we've got to do our, you know, we've got a test coming up next week. Well, we're testing our kids to death. Literally, they are killing themselves over stress. Um, And in in some of these school systems, they have more days of testing than they have of instruction. That's not okay. Last year, I went to Finland for um, a month and I went to a program that the government of Finland uh, has over there. They have the second best education system in the world. And they have a program that you can go to where they teach you what they're doing and they take you into the schools and let you see it in, in action. And basically they're doing Charlotte Mason homeschooling in a school setting and it's, it's working. It's very, very wonderful. And they don't have homework. They don't have busing. They don't wear shoes during school. They go outside every single day. They live inside yeah. the Arctic circle where it's really cold. Wow. They're very healthy. They don't eat wrong. And if we would just adapt that laid back attitude and, and they don't test, they only have a few tests they have to take along the way. If we would adopt that laid back attitude and say, if we just trust God with what we're doing here and follow our heart yeah. and then put them, you know, on a path of, of daily studying, reading and, and writing and, and, and exploring the light, the, the world and, and enjoying life and serving other people, it's all going to work out. And along the way, these children are going to find out something that they love. And they can pursue that and go in a, in a specific direction. And then if they need to go to college, they can. They don't, homeschoolers do not have a hard time getting into college at all. Yeah. Colleges yeah. love homeschoolers. In fact, they're, they're creating high school programs for them now so that they can shoo them in to, to college. Right. But if you don't have to go to, if you don't want to go to college, you don't have to because this is the information age. And there are so many ways that young people can make money with a computer or now even a phone. You don't have to go to college to be successful with a career. Right, right. Instead of going to college and coming out with $80,000 or more of debt that you then have to figure out a way to pay off. And, and again, not that college is wrong for everybody, um, but you know, our society has, has built this mentality that every kid must go to college right out of high school in order to be successful. Right. And, you know, I, I completely disagree. College is certainly for some people. And there are people who, you know, they love their job. They, they, they want to go to, school to become a doctor or an engineer or, you know, whatever it is that they're doing. And they go into that field and then they come out and they get a job and they love their job, truly enjoy going to work every day and praise God for that because that is how God created them to be. But not everybody's made to do that. Right. And and so I I love that there's opportunity for those who, who don't want to go through that route of college to be able to successfully support their families um, and and be able to be with their families. It's one of the greatest parts of entrepreneurship is that you get to be a family all the time. You get to spend your time together. You know, oftentimes you can travel on the off season when other people are in school. If you're a homeschool family who works from home and dad or mom can work remotely, you have the opportunity to be able to work on the road. And, you know, what a great blessing that is. I mean, that's a huge benefit to being able to work from home. Um, and so, so, so many benefits to that. Um, but yes, I, I so much appreciate it. Talk really quickly about the kid, because you, you touched on this a tiny bit, but that kid who maybe just doesn't fit into the box um, of traditional education or, um, you know, a, a career as, as our society would think. How, how, what would you say to encourage those parents whose kids like you, because you said earlier you had a child like that, your oldest was like, 
nope, not doing this whole school thing, not doing this testing thing. How would you encourage the parents whose kids are just, they, they just don't fit into that box? Right. I actually had more than one child that was like that. And I had several that were very compliant. And I had a couple that actually loved school and loved workbooks and all. And I just didn't understand that at all. <laughs> but uh, the thing to do is, number one, pray a lot and trust God and pray for yourself. Because the child's not the problem. It's mom and her, her perceptions of what has to happen for this child to be actually educated. So <clears throat> you usually know when about they're four years old uh, that they are not normal. Uh, when they go to school, they sit out in the hall a lot. Drew sat in the, in, in the hall um, the whole first year he was in school. And um, they sometimes they don't, they, they're visionaries mainly. They see mm -hmm. things differently. And so if they walk into a situation, they will see things and they will even try to speak them, uh, speak words of correction to teachers but it's because they're young and they, they usually don't have that, their abilities brought underneath the control of the Holy Spirit yet. So they don't say it in a, in a constructive, uh, helpful <laughs> way. And they end up, you know, being sent to the principal's office. And if, you're, if they're at home, uh, they get sent to time out or to their room or whatever, where they're completely happy usually to be right. in the room by themselves. So that <laughs> they don't they have can to really dream. <laughs> right, right. And they can read and they can draw and they can play with their Legos and they can build things. So uh -huh. I would say, um, when you have a child who's different, first of all, study who they are. There's two different types of people, basically, starters and finishers. Visionaries are starters. There's only 10% of the people out there that are, and finishers are uh, never know where to start. And if you have a starter child, they are going to be a leader. They are going to be a visionary, and you cannot hold them down. And if you do, you, you just ruin them. And so they are leaders and need to be trained to, to be leaders. They, need, they don't need to be told what to do all the time. You need to create systems. So here's an example. Instead of saying... Uh, they, instead of going to each one of your children's rooms to wake them up every morning and you have this gigantic struggle about getting out of bed because they stayed up too late at night reading or playing video games, then get them all either a clock or a cell phone if they've got a phone for, for older children and say, breakfast is at 8 o'clock. If you're here, you eat. If you're not here, you don't eat. Now, you've created a system and they know what the rules are. If they want to eat, they will be there at 8 o'clock. They will turn that clock on. If, they're, if they don't want to eat, they will miss it. So don't give them snacks after they miss right. breakfast. But and they'll mom, learn after a couple of days of missing breakfast. Absolutely. It only <laughs> takes one child one time to miss one meal for the whole family to learn because Proverbs yeah. says the foolish learn from the wise or the wise learn from the foolish. Sorry, I got that backwards. So uh, so instead of mom going to her to everybody's room and have and start the day off with this big gigantic fight, she just needs to go to the kitchen and she doesn't even have to cook. Somebody else should be cooking. You can have, <laughs> you know, somebody else needs to rotate out the, ch the chores. We only rotate them out uh every year. So everybody has a whole year to cook for the family and they have other mm -hmm. chores that they do. But if they can manage a kitchen and get everything done uh, for Thanksgiving and Christmas, they can manage a business. That's where mm -hmm. those, those jobs start. So we have to rethink the way that we operate and what we've been told in life because moms are trying to do too much. They get burned out. They get tired. They start treating their husbands like the, the extra child in the household. Um, they don't take care of themselves. They're burned out. They're stressed out. Uh, I see this every single weekend and I am so sad and so grieved by it because they are trying to bring school home. That's what they're doing. Right. Yep. And it doesn't work. Uh, they need to realize that the school system that we have is an artificial system mm -hmm. and it does what it's, what it's structured to do. Yep. I mean, it's taken yep. a bunch of kids through a bunch of stuff in a, in a certain amount of time, but with homeschooling, you can accomplish a lot more, a lot faster. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to um, put all the artificial constraints in which testing is one of those. Um, and, in order to get these children to learn, all you have to do is ask them what they're reading, ask them what they've learned today. And if they say nothing, then something's wrong at your house. Get those kids out and doing stuff, but take them out and travel. Oh my goodness. There's, there's two things that will get your, your children uh, admitted to a college. If they've started their home business and if they've traveled internationally, hmm. that's like a shoe in. But how many people do that when their kids are in junior high or high school? They don't. So if you just took yeah. a year off and said, let's just rent a motor home and just travel around the country and go see, let's just go see every 50, all the 50 states yeah. and just do that. You can actually become a travel professional now, but that, that whole industry just changed about three and a half years ago. Uh, and so now it's super easy for, the, for you to do that and, uh, and then be able to benefit from that. Um, and then start a home business on the side. All you have to do is have a business and a, and a, po a blog. There's a lot of people, oh, I know so many homeschool moms right now who are blogging yeah. and all they're talking about is just mom stuff and homeschool stuff and farm stuff. And they have one little product for sale on the side They're You know, they have some kind of a network marketing company company that has products that they that they uh, recommend or they are doing affiliate marketing or something like that on the side and they're bringing their husbands home from corporate America yeah. making you know 
$20,000 a month. I mean, it's, it's crazy. There's yeah. just so many things that you can do now. And so if we would just step outside the box and realize we need to be the, the people that are that are leading the charge because yes. we have opted out of the government education system. We are, we can do, we have a certain amount of freedom and it depends on what state you're in, how much freedom you have, but there are so many options. Why are we replicating a system that's not working? Right. Yes. Oh yes. I completely agree. Um, there's so many great opportunities out there for homeschool families. Um, you know, I think most people watching this are probably already homeschool families, but many are not. And um, for those who, who are not yet in the homeschool world, there is so much freedom in homeschooling. You know, you, you talk about school and, and people trying to bring the classroom into their home. And I know that is what parents try to do over and over and over again, because it does, it's school as we know it. It's how we grew up. So you get up at seven o'clock or, you know, you get to school at 7.30 and you sit in the classroom, you have homeroom and then you start math class and then you have a little break and then you go to English and you go to PE and, and, and you have this perfectly structured day and you're missing the whole outside world right? completely. I mean, you're learning basically how to sit at a desk. And some people don't even learn that very well because they're not made to be able to do that. And, you know, our, our kids are made. I, I just interviewed Abby Ranella and we talked about the importance of outdoor play and how important it is for our kids to be outside. And, and it's not just the physical activity. But it, I mean, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, they get to explore God's creation. There are so many important parts of just being outside. And homeschooling provides so much freedom for us to be able to be who God made us to be and allowing our kids to become who God made them to be. And when you're locked up in a classroom for 40 hours a week, it's very difficult for kids to be able to become that, to become who they're really meant to be and to really understand what they, what they love, what they're passionate about, what they're made for, how they can impact the world. You know, that's a big thing. We talk with our girls often about that is God put us on this earth to impact his kingdom. So let's do it well. And, um, and so anyway, it's, it's such a great opportunity. Um, to, I, just one, one last question I want to ask you, um, cause we have just a couple more minutes left. <clears throat> what is it that you want to do with your life? Like, I mean, you're impacting all of these people. What is your goal for your life? Oh, wow. <laughs> I have many, but my biggest goal is to see homeschoolers get free so that they learn how to homeschool according to the ways that the Holy Spirit has for them to be Holy Spirit led. Mm -hmm. And I think that we are, we, there's a sweep of the Holy Spirit coming across this country in several different ways, bringing mom home, bringing dad home, bringing home business in, doing baking bread, getting back to eating natural, getting back to farming, all these different things I think are sweeps of the Holy Spirit. But um, we're losing the, the concept of the relationship and, and keeping the heart of your child mm -hmm. because we're trying to trust in programs and computer pr programs and, and curriculum programs. And we're trying to make sure that we're getting everything right according to the rules that have been laid out for us. And we're losing the heart of our children. Yeah. I talk to moms every weekend who have these older kids, uh, 17, 18 years old. And they say, my child doesn't want to do school anymore. He doesn't like us. He doesn't like our God. He doesn't mm -hmm. want to be with us because we tried to do everything according to the way that we were told to do it. Right. And he's out. He's often out of our family. What do I do? Mm -hmm. And so I tell those families, and if this is, if the, for those of you who are listening, if this is you, the answer here is to repent and you're going to say, oh my, what? How, how can I repent? I'm the mom. I'm always right. No, if you've lost the heart of your child, something wasn't right. And it, you probably didn't intend sure. for it to turn out like it did. You thought you were doing the right thing. And that's what these mom, moms always say. I thought I was doing the right thing. But listen to the heart of your child and listen to your heart because when it's all over, if you've kept the heart of your child, you will be, have earned the right to be an advisor. And if you haven't, they will leave you. And, you'll, and when they get ready to make the most important decisions in, your, in their life, where they're going to live, what they're going to do, and who they're going to marry, they will not come back to you and ask. Mm -hmm. um, we have four boys, three girls. Um, we had, back in 2015, my fourth son had an accident and died. Mm -hmm. And at that point, we all just broke down and said, oh my, how did this happen? What happened here? And I realized this boy went to heaven. He was wonderful. Everybody loved him. He was everybody's little brother. But we all knew he went to heaven. And we tried to raise him from the dead. And my son Drew and his friend David both 
took their hands off at the same second and said, wait, we just saw a vision of him riding across the field on a big white horse. Uh, and he stopped riding like an idiot, you know, stopped and looked at Drew and said, I'm in love, stop. And that gave me hope to know that he really is there. And so I just said, you know what? I have a responsibility to keep going and helping these families to, to be able to bring their children into the kingdom of heaven, because it's not about the high school diploma. It's not about the college degree. It's about, are your children going to go to heaven? Amen. If you do this thing wrong, you, you steer them away from you. You steer them away from your God. If yep. you do it right, you steer them towards the things that you love and hopefully toward the kingdom of God. Yes. Oh my gosh. I love that so much. You know, we talk about success and earlier we talked about success stories and, and people talk about being a successful adult. And my husband and I have often talked about this and we talk about this with our girls. Success to us is not laid up in how much money you make or how, how, you know, the world's idea of success is and how great of a job you have, or how big your paycheck is, how big your house is, how many kids you have, how nice of a car you have. That is not success. Success is showing our kids who Jesus is every day, as many times as we can, in as many ways as we can, showing them the love of Christ and then having them go out and show others the love of Christ and knowing, like you said, that we are going to spend eternity in heaven with our children because there's no greater joy. You know, the Bible says that there's no greater joy than knowing that our children are walking with Christ. That's right. And, and that's it. That's what it's all about. That's why we are so passionate about homeschooling because putting our children in a system that teaches them everything that's contrary to the word of God and contrary to God's truth is not reaching the heart of your children. Now you can speak truth to your kids when they're, you know, in public school or, or, or even in, in private school, you can still take time to, to love your kids. And obviously those parents love their kids as well. You can still take time to, to teach them and to love them. But when you're teaching them for 10 minutes a day, if that, and then you're sending them off somewhere else that's teaching them everything else but God, and not even everything else but God, but everything that's anti-God, it's really hard to reach the heart of your children. And it's really, really hard to impact their lives and have them go on and to impact the lives of their children who are now your grandchildren and other people. And so, so yes, I couldn't agree more. It's all about Jesus. That's what it all comes back to. And, and right. that's all that matters. So Ray, thank you so much for your time today. Um, Again, uh, for those listening, her, her website is educatingforsuccess.com. We will link to that in the show notes, but check it out. Um, check out her conference. It's excellent. We've been to it. Um, it's the Home Business Conference, and it's in North Alabama, right, is where you have this it? This year. This right. Year. This year, it's at Lake Gunnersville State Park, which is an absolutely beautiful state park, and everyone's, everyone's going to have an awesome time there. So cool. And it's August 8th through the 10th, correct? Uh, right. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Okay, so we'll, we'll uh, put all that information there. Um, but thank you again. Oh, and I, I forgot to mention this too. You have an a ebook, and oh, we should have said this on the podcast, uh, but you have an ebook that they can download for free called 10 Things Mama Ray Taught Her Children About Home Business. Right. And um, it's so cool. I have that book and I've, I've been able to look through it and it's excellent. And um, there's so many good pointers and things in there. Um, so check out that book, sign up for her mailing list. You can um, get that ebook for free. And definitely check out her conference. If you have a chance to go to it, I highly recommend it. So thank you again, Ray. You are a huge encouragement to me and many, many others and a huge blessing. And I appreciate your time today. Great. Well, thank you so much. And thanks, Yvette, for what you're doing with your project, because I think it's going to really make a huge impact in the world. And it's about time. We need it. Well, thank you. All, all by God's power and all for his glory. So we're excited to be doing it. So Amen. Have a great day. And for those of you watching, thank you so much for joining us today. Have a great rest of your day and we will talk to you soon. Bye.